We have a really special podcast for you today on BDSM United Podcast. Uh, I am Primal Piggy. You can find me on Facebook at The Primal Piggy, all one word, or as an admin of a rather large Facebook page called Whips, Chains, and Duct Tape. You can find that on Facebook at WCDT BDSM. And you can also find this on the web at www.bdsmunited.com. Uh, outside of BDSM, brattiness is typically viewed as a derogatory description of someone who's usually immature and certainly ill-mannered or insubordinate. So how did a derogatory term become a somewhat prominent kink within modern BDSM? And how do we view brattiness? Better yet, how should we view brats and brattiness? We like to look at our history around here to try to discover how we got here. All history now is a bit of a puzzle, especially within BDSM, because often we're having fun and no one thinks that we need a historian. Therefore, parts are missing, so we try to make the clearest picture with what is available to us. When we look to old guard BDSM, and as I like to say, uh, we are calling them old guard. It's probably not a description that they used to describe themselves. When we look to old guard BDSM, brats and bratting is absent. So we know it was added along the way. Um, the earliest examples that we've found are in the mid to late 1990s. And they're in works that are targeting or were targeting heterosexual couples who were incorporating kink into their already established relationships. So we know it was brought into the lifestyle at a time when a lot more straight people were becoming common in the lifestyle. Uh, if we had to make an educated guess at why it wasn't found at Old Guard, uh, it would be that the military hierarchy and protocol of our that our lifestyle is based on just wouldn't be favorable toward blatant immaturity and insubordination. It just wouldn't have been seen as playful. Perhaps it would have been seen as a safety risk or someone who's difficult to trust. Uh, purposely not following rules or looking for loopholes to get out of protocol likely wouldn't have been tolerated. Also, just overall, gay culture has always been more forward at simply asking for what you want in regards to kink. Things like keys and hankies, for example, allowed men to wear something that said, I'm a bottom who needs pain. No one really needed to act out to get it. Now, given our history, so how did anyone even think to bring bratting into the lifestyle in the first place? Well, long before we had anything or anyone doing bratting in scenes, we had something called SAM, which is an acronym for Smart Ass Mac Masochist. Uh, it's not really the best name, but it was a common title for it. Now, in the book Consensual Sadomasochism, which was first published in 1996, we get a pretty good picture of what it meant to be a Sam. And it even uses the word, just listen for it, it uses the word brat in their description. Quoting the book, Sometimes in a scene, a bottom wants more sensation, more discipline, more attention, more, more, more. Instead of making a polite request, if it pleases you, sir, you could spank me a little harder, the bottom acts covertly, trying to manipulate the top by doing or saying something that will be provocative. The bottom, who wants more sensation and acts like a brat in order to be disciplined, is known as a Sam or a smart-assed masochist. The bottom who wants more mental control and steps out of line in order to be reined in is called a NSAS, or a smart-ass submissive. The entire process of trying to manipulate the person who is supposed to be in charge is part of topping from the bottom. 
When we speak of topping from the bottom, we ordinarily refer, refer to more or less conscious manipulations by a bottom to take back power he has agreed to give away. So the best definition of Sam is a masochistic bottom who sometimes attempts to provoke a primal response from a sadistic top into administering more pain. Let me say that one more time. So the best definition of Sam is a masochistic bottom. It's someone who tries to provoke a primal response out of someone, um, specifically a sadistic top, into administering more pain. Sam belongs within a negotiated scene where both persons involved have agreed to this type of provoking. They've agreed to this type of play. Now, the book introduced a less common term for topping from the bottom. They called it an SAS. It's not really, uh, outside of this book, it's not really a widely used or accepted term. Uh, I haven't seen it anywhere else except for in this book. But um, the, the term topping from the bottom, to the act where a submissive steps out of line in other words, the submissive manipulates outside of what has been negotiated within a relationship dynamic. The action of topping from the bottom was when a submissive did this within a specific scene, but it, it actually involved violating the relationship dynamic itself. Today, we use that same term or that type of manipulation anywhere it takes place between a submissive and their dominant partner not just in scenes, but anytime a submissive manipulates their dominant partner in a way that violates the relationship dynamic to try to uh, manipulate and, and, and get something out of or, uh, or somewhat dominate their dominant partner, we call that topping from the bottom. And it still is considered stepping out of line. So we looked to our history and we saw when bratting came about and the why it even became a part of BDSM. Let's take that and form the how by looking at where bratting belongs and where it doesn't belong within BDSM. So because bratting is a modern extension of what was once Sam, it belongs within negotiated scenes. It's an S&M kink that perhaps some people enjoy. While it was once typically related to the giving and receiving of pleasurable pain, like all sadomasochism, today we find it is more related to two other kinks as well, role play and age play. Don't fret, I'll define those two for you. Role play is taking an identity in a scene that's different than what your identity is in everyday life. Role play being, can be taking a non-BDSM identity within a scene, which would be the case of brat or brat tamer because they aren't identities that are found within power exchange relationships. You know, those relationships such as dom and sub. Age play is similar to role play, except instead of identity, it is taking an age that is different than your age in everyday life. Now, the, in age play, the age could be older or younger, depending on what you want for your scene. Age play within bratting would be someone expressing deliberate immaturity within a scene. And just so you know what a scene is, a scene is a time of erotic play that can include physical play, psychological play, and or role play. A scene can include S&M tools and techniques or any other type of consensual kink. A scene is often the product of negotiation, where play is done within the boundaries and the limits of those involved. And lastly, this is a big important one, lastly, a scene lasts for a period of time and then ends. So scenes don't last forever. Scenes aren't really your everyday life. Scene lasts for a period of time and then ends. So bratting, which is basically a modernization of Sam, just like the Sam kink belongs within scenes. It belongs within a time of negotiated play that lasts for that specific time and then ends. 
So if we know that, then where does bratting not belong within BDSM? The answer to this is a bit controversial, and the reasons are rather complex. I mean, the controversy exists because of a variety of reasons. Some of those reasons could be not understanding our history and traditions, perhaps not understanding BDSM culture overall, perhaps not understanding how power exchange works, or perhaps maybe even simply creating a totally new thing that's, you know, loosely based on BDSM but doesn't exactly fit within BDSM. Like I said, controversy exists and the reasons are complex and they're diversified. Meaning it's hard to make a real general, uh, you know, reason why uh, the controversy exists. It comes from a variety of different places according to some different people. Traditionally speaking, according to BDSM, looking back at our history to today, Bratting does not belong outside scenes. Brat's not an identity within BDSM, nor is it a type or variety of the identities we already have. It's not an adjective that you put in front of a dom or a sub or, or a master or a slave. Uh, we don't put ag adjectives with in front of our identities to make them into anything different. We don't make special adjectives for our kinks. Uh, no, we're... You know, perhaps you're a dominant or a submissive that enjoys bratting. It doesn't make you a bratty blank. And so brat's not an identity within BDSM, nor is it a type or variety of the identities we already have. Traditionally speaking, according to BDSM, looking at our history now, bratting does not have a place within the everyday life of a power exchange relationship. You know, it's the antithesis, antithesis of bondage and discipline, and it breaks down the mental and physical bondage as well as adding chaos and inconsistency to the rules, protocols, rituals, routines, training, service, and the corrections and punishments, those things that make up healthy power exchange relationships. Like I said earlier in this podcast, you won't find brats and bratting in that old guard type of BDSM because power exchanges were built on the mixture of military hierarchy and erotic play. Now, I know from my personal time in the military that insubordination, intentionally breaking rules or protocols and Failure to pay attention to details. I mean, I heard that so many times in basic training, for instance, that we had to pay attention to details, pay attention to the details, which is really, you know, when you a failure to pay attention to details is the basis for bratting that looks for loopholes. Those things uh, were not encouraged and they really weren't tolerated, especially not in, in the military when I was then in there. They were not meant met, sorry, with fun punishments, nor rewards. They actually lead to dishonorable discharge. You know, honor is a pillar of BDSM. We don't look for ways to act dishonorably. Not then, and really not now. Some would say, especially traditionalists, we already have SAM, so we don't really need to call it something else. You know, really, it doesn't matter what label you give your kink within scenes, as long as you're doing it rack. Briefly looking at the risks to bratting or brat taming, whatever you want to call it, would be that if you're pushing someone or being pushed, you really need to be certain that you don't lash out in anger and respond or get a response that pushes past your boundaries and limits. Because of the emotions involved in this kink, personally, I would label it age play, or sorry, edge play. The, the push and the response to the pushing can be similar to primal play, and while one person may be acting immaturely, the top really needs to be careful in how they respond. Uh, generally speaking, safe words would be useful for both the bottom and the top. Uh, that could slow down or completely stop the bratting if needed. The kink needs to be consensual. Bratting, like all kinks, needs to be done in kink spaces where those outside the scene itself are able to consent to. And it should be negotiated and within the boundaries and limits of both partners involved. 
since it does sometimes involve some aspects of consensual non-consent and highly charged emotions that are often leading to that primal response and sadomasochistic play, it's a kink that should involve the fries of consent. F-R-I-E-S. Freely given, reversible, intentional, enthusiastic, and specific. Those are all the things that make up what it means to have consent. And because it's a kink, it should be fun for those involved. It should be something the bottom and the top both enjoy doing. If it's not fun for everyone, then it isn't kink, and therefore it, it's not really rack. Proper vetting will lead you to the right play partners for this kink and all the kinks you enjoy. I'm Primal Piggy. You can find me on Facebook at The Primal Piggy, all one word. You can also find me, like I said earlier, as an admin of a rather large Facebook page, about 120,000 followers, uh, uh, called Whips, Chains, and Duct Tape. You can find that on Facebook at WCDT BDSM. Uh, if you're listening on your favorite platform, be sure to leave us a review. Tell us what you liked or maybe you hated this episode. Be sure you tell us what you think so that others can uh, can uh, know that we exist and so that they can also, uh, uh, if we, sorry, we can also, if we read your comment and it's something that we can change, we'll try to make any of the changes possible. Uh, thank you for listening today.